Today I'm going to show you how to make a runtime hour counter. When we have several motors, we must control, we must know when a pump has reached its maintenance time. That is, if we have to grease, if we have to change bearings, or we have to change a belt, let's say for a blower. So using the runtime, we can know when to change the different items so for this we need a timer normally in all systems we were using timers which were like this this is an electrical timer it was connected let's say for a single phase system it was connected directly to the live and neutral and this will increment with time whenever the pump was running or for in this case this is a water heater so whenever the water heater is on this will power the hour meter and the power meter will start to count but let's say in an industrial system you have many pumps many motors like for blowers aerators we need to have several hour meters but the problem is we won't go to each pump let's say we have 10 pumps at different locations so we have to walk to each pump to know what is our run on the meters so what we do normally in industrial system we put timers on the PLC program so basically what we do first of all we must know how to take the feedback normally it, it's connected on the KM1 which is here this is a main contactor for the DOL. So what we do is we form the KM contactor. This is a KM contactor. KM, which is the same as here. So what we do normally in a relay, we have several contacts. So we will use one pair of the normally open contact. And this will go to the digital input of the PLC. Here. This will be the positive 24 volt from the PLC. And this will go to the input in my case I will be using input 0 0.5 so basically this is a connection so as to know whenever this pump is running using the KM contactor and we have the feedback so I will show you how to make the free registers for the hour counter so first of all we have one register which is here memory word one so this will be used to count the seconds you have another one which is here hours so now the second will increment each time we have the second active the second is active so the signal will flow from here and whenever the pump is running the signal will go across this one which is in put 0.5 so as to know whenever the pump is running this go to this register so now the the second register will count from 0 to 59 upon reaching of 59 this will increment register MW2 so each time we have 59 seconds this register will be increased so that's why we add one as you can see 
sorry this one is one so now we have our minutes each time the minutes goes from 0 to 59 this will increment register number 3 from here you can have the hours so we have our three registers that is the seconds the minutes and the hours so this is how we have our hour counter now I will show you on the PLC how it's done So I have already made it but I have already made it but just for you to understand it I will just delete it to start a new program I delete this also so from here I make another program I rename it as our run Now from here, as I told you, you can have the registers, it depends on your PLC. From here you go to tools and you go to system bits, but for this PLC it's like this, but for other PLC it will be another memory location. So as you can see here. This is a time base of one second generated by the internal clock of the PLC. Each one second, I will have a rising edge. And here you have minutes, and here you have 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds. Mainly used for counting or to detect a change of signal after some time. So basically, we use this. So I will be using the S6, one second. You the register x6 time base one second so now we will put the input from the pump which is 0 5 5 I can rename it as Pump run feedback. Okay. From here, you will need this operation block here, and also we need to have a rising edge. because else it will continue to count even if the signal is high so we have to know when there's a change of signal for this time base then it should start so i just give you an overview of rising edge it evaluates edge of the expression so at each rising edge the signal will change So I will add the registers now. Now I will add another register. Okay, let's add it.
So this will be the minute counter. So this will be the minute counter. But I have to also to compare. So I will put a comparison block. So this when it, it will be 60, this will increment this register that is a minute counter. But also when it's 60, I have to reset this counter. So this counter should be zero again. So MW1, shift is equal to, I have put it to zero. So whenever this will be 60, this second register will become zero again. So now the minute is done. Now I will make the hour counter. So again, this one. M, MW three which is equal to MW three plus one and this will occur when I put another function here when the minute will be more than sixty. So, And at the same time, we need to reset the, the minute counter. So now we'll give it a try. Every 
register zero that is for the second the, the minute and the hours and the pump is not running so I will just make it run now the signal is active as you can see the second has started to count so this will go up to 60 so we wait for a while for So here it will compare the value. When it will be 60, this will increment. That is the minute register which is here. Right now it's zero, so now it's one minute. So after each count of 60, this will increment the minutes but for this to reach the hour so we'll have to wait for a while so i will just change the minute value i will put it to 59 So I've put it to 59. So after 59, that is, it has already counted to one hour. I've changed the value because else we'll have to wait for one hour. So right now the hour is still at zero. We have to wait for the seconds to increment. That is right now it's at 40. the hour has changed one hour so this is how we do an a runtime hour for this is how we do a runtime hour counter for pump this is how we do a runtime hour counter for pump monitoring thank you do subscribe for other videos next time i will try to add the values to an hmi using modbus because these values are already on modbus